Well, the, the first thing that we look at as far as the energy, like we said, focusing on the energy and, and just becoming aware, first of all, that you're offering these different vibrations and that there there's a difference between your emotions and your feelings. Your emotions come and go and you can see them rise and fall within the body. But you have feelings that are connected to your ideas or your belief systems that are constant. Boom. That are constant. Mind blower. Yeah. Welcome to the Consciousness of the Way. I'm your humble servant and Sifu, Taoist Master Sun Ching. And um, I've been feeling this build up, this incredible uh, build up for a couple of days now, ever since I uh, connected with uh, this incredible being. And um, it's a, 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 a mutual consensus of this amplitude of energy. And so I want to welcome to the podcast today, Benny Ferguson, and uh, he has a, um, an incredible story um, in his journey and realization and how he accesses information, and uh, it's really profound. So I want to welcome you to the podcast today, my friend. How are you doing? Oh, doing awesome. Doing awesome today, Sam. Thank you very much for having me. This is exciting. It's very this, exciting. This is really exciting. So what, what we might do for the audience is have you share a little bit more about your your journey to this realization, how how you've got to this point of, you know, accessing this incredible frequency and information and just sharing it to to awaken more people to the the true nature of their power. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I didn't <laughs> I don't think any of us started off thinking that we were gonna do do this type of thing or <laughs> or know that this path was in front of us. I know, I know now that I was being urged in this direction. I've been, I've been communicated to that I've done this before. Uh, so early elementary school, I started having what I called nightmares at the time, but they were always the same. The nightmare was that I always felt like someone was behind me. And of course now I would have turned around and asked, you know, <laughs> trying to speak with them. But then I was just scared to death. I mean, I was a child, but I had the same dream. It was the exact same dream. It felt like someone was behind me. And I would try to get away from them, but I couldn't. I would move really, really slow, couldn't move myself. And so I think that had an inverse effect of starting a fear thing inside of me as a child. Um, but that dream continued for a period of time. And like I said, it started early, early elementary school. Um, I started having, well, let's step back just a second. I grew up in a, in a religious family, highly religious. Christianity was the thing. And probably around that same time. I know I was little and I want to say it may have been maybe right before school or right after school. I had a, I had a challenge with the idea of love that was being communicated. Mm -hmm. It didn't make sense. And there's a line that I was, that I was told that was communicated that a child that does not accept Jesus, the Jesus idea can't get into heaven. And that idea didn't make any sense to me. As a child, it didn't make any sense to me. I mean, and, and all my family, they're all in this, but that didn't make sense to me. How this, how can you, if God is loving, if God is unconditional love and all these things that are being communicated at the same time, how can a child that doesn't even know the difference be condemned? It, it didn't make sense. So that was as a child. Um, I started having, having out-of-body experiences in college and I didn't know it. I would be sleeping on my stomach and I could see my, there were times I could see my roommate. I could see him clearly uh, doing his thing, doing homework on the bed. And it scared me at first. I thought, you know, I, I knew I was on the other side of the of the veil. And I got it happened so much that I got to the point where I would make myself upset to try to push myself out of it. And that seemed to work. So I used it. Um, in high school, I always knew I was going to be in business. I just didn't know what it was. Uh, my dad... And one of the questions that I had was my dad and his brothers, they were all, they were carpenters, they were mechanics, they were brick masons, all these things. And even as a high schooler, I always asked myself, I never asked them, I asked myself, I wonder why they never started in business for themselves. You know, they had all of these tools, they, they built the houses that we grew up in in the, in the country. And so I had that question. So that always kind of spurred me along in the back of my mind. Uh, so after college, I started getting to 
I did some work deliver marketing stuff. I got into a lot of sales things uh, where, you know, the commission commission type things with the, the promise of having your own office in and failed at those things. Knowing now that I had a huge fear of rejection, right? And so I was always a strong learner. So I knew I knew everything that everybody else knew, right? But I couldn't get myself to perform. I couldn't get myself to act to create the money that I needed. Uh, the last stint in that, I was in financial services, fully licensed, life insurance. I could do, uh, was able to do mutual funds, all of these things, fully licensed in North Carolina. And I spent about three years in this. And I knew everybody in the office. We went to conferences and stuff together. So I knew even the even the gentleman that was over a lot of the offices in, in North Carolina, he was almost $100,000 a month. And I spent a lot of time with him. I ate with him, all of this stuff for years. So I knew everything that he knew, but I couldn't get myself to do the things that he could do. And so I'm driving home from Greensboro one afternoon. And I'm just completely mad at myself, right? I'm crying. I'm slamming my hands on the steering wheel, asking myself, what's wrong with me, right? Why can't I get myself to do? Because I would sit in front of the phone needing to make calls, and I'd sit for hours self-defeating myself, worrying about what people were going to say on the other end. And so I did that. A couple weeks later, I had another nightmare. And right before I woke up, I asked, I told myself that I was tired of being afraid. And once I said that, I woke up, and I woke up in an anger rage. And it felt like I had fire over me. I was burning and I stood beside the bed and I was so mad. My wife came around the bed. She's asked me if I was, what was wrong and tried to get me to calm down. And just like that, I was behind my body. My vision was 360 degrees. I could see my body and I could see my wife in front of my body begging for me to calm down. And I was trying to <laughs> keep control of, I was trying to keep control of my body to keep me from attacking her because I was in such a rage. Right. And then I was back in my body. I hit the bookshelf beside and hurt my hands. And so the next day I knew that it wasn't a dream because my hand was still bruised from hitting the bookshelf. Right. And then from there, that's kind of when it my learning and all these things started because what happened to me, I couldn't, I'd never been explained in the Bible. So I immediately went out of the Bible. I went through all the, the major tradi religious traditions of the world, world, the Tao, the Bhagavad Gita, all of these things. I read them. And because I was looking for what happened to me and I wasn't looking for what was wrong with them in comparison, <laughs> I saw all of the parallels. I saw all of the things that were the same in all of them versus looking for the differences. And then from there, quantum physics, all of this stuff. And I could see the connection between all of this stuff, all of the science that I had in college. I majored in chemistry, majored in biology, minored in chemistry. I can see all of the connections because of the experience. Um, started channeling in 2012. Uh, I, had, I was already listening to Abraham because of the secret and all of that stuff with Esther. I'd, I was already listening to them. And started writing, started channeling 2012, Right, typing on the computer first, and then I said, "Okay, well, I want to be able to speak." Started speaking. I want to be able to do it with my eyes closed, and then I started working on that. And so it's just been a progression of <clears throat> of growth based on what I wanted to do and how I wanted to be able to be able to deliver the message, which is so profound. You know, even for me, when I do when I do my my online workshops and that time, I told the group uh, last weekend, well, another private group that I have last weekend that. I went back and listened to the recording before I sent it out to them and I actually started shaking. I'm like, wow, this is this is powerful. <laughs> it was affecting me on the back end before I sent them the recording because I had to go through it. But yeah, it's kind of just been a progression. And uh, but the message is the same. The message is the same. When I after that happened, after the first the out of body experience happened, I asked myself because there's so much information out there. So there's so much information out there. There's so many different ways you can go. And my question is, how does this information directly affect your life now? Because there's a lot out there that's just information. But the question I asked was, what control? If all of this is true, and that this is not the real truth, because I had this out of body experience, and I know I did, and I, my vision was 360. And I saw my body in front of me. What control and power do I have in and over my life? And that question has guided me ever, ever since. And that was 2006. And that's what I have put all of the information that I have 
acquired to this point under that question. And that's what I use as the basis to try to help other people. Right. Well, and, I, I mean, my friend, I just, I just get just so much joy and excitement from hearing you be giddy and grateful. And, and I mean, this is something that is so critical to the audience. Um, I want them to really embrace the understanding of that simplicity yeah. because that is how you stay in this state. That is how you acquire this consciousness is the gratitude, the selflessness that comes with this. And yeah. so it all just comes upon you. And it's it, for me, you, I mean, it's so exciting to watch you because this is how I feel every day I wake up as yeah. if the first day I ever experienced it. It's like Christmas every second, every minute, every hour, because it's so profound. It is yeah. so profound. And so the magnitude has never dissipated. The, the value has never dissipated for myself. I've been on this journey 30 years. And so you are just, a, you're, it's like the echoing, rippling similarities to our experiences are just getting me so excited because this is what you, for the audience, this is how you obtain this level of consciousness and, and, and maintain it because there's a level of opening a frequency that you stay at when yep. you are receiving this information. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Benny? Well, <clears throat> I would say that I'm working toward when I'm, when I actually tell you the truth, when I'm working with people, I'm in it. When I'm not working with people and I'm in my own life, I move in and out of it. If I'm being yeah. honest, and I'm, that's I'm, what I'm working on. I'm working <clears> on, <throat> I'm working on, being in that level of, of, of frequency, that level of vibration with the cons on a consistent basis, because I know that I have made shifts in that with that play and practice. And what happens is, I know you know, what happens is when you're consistent at expressing a new level of vibration, consistent, the truths of that level of vibration begin to come into you. They're different ideas. They're different thought patterns. All of these things begin to make their way in when you move up even a fraction of a bit out of what has been your normal vibration. Yeah. 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 And that's what we right. don't know. These little things like this is what we don't know that there's a whole, it's almost like a whole nother world, another earth of thinking that begins to make its way in, but you have to be consistent in your holding of a new vibration. So that's what I'm doing now personally. And, and people that I work with on a consistent basis, we're striving to, reach for a higher vibration and be consistent with it playfully not work not oh i gotta do this but playfully it's in right? embodying your reality i mean i always tell people this they look at me and and a lot of authoritarians get a little stiff and edgy when i go your truth is the only truth you need to be concerned with and they're like whoa Yep. Oh, hey, whoa, 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 that 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 sounds very dangerous. They, they, that being able to tell someone that and have them affirm that within the tr true core of themselves. Yep. That's dangerous, my friend. I don't think you should be speaking like that. I'm like, really? Because that's how you ascend. Yeah. Because the validation is your experience, not my experience. Right. And so that feeling and that frequency, it's it's kind of like, well, and people sort of they veer off with the um, semantics of duality. And I say that I'm not dismissing duality because that's a construct of how we, we came to the level of consciousness that we have through our own experiences. But what happens is people just kind of go, well, what about if, if you're just some psychopath or some murderer or uh, do you think that's okay? And I'm like, well, of course you're going to go there because that's the state you live in, which is mm -hmm. fear, death, mm -hmm. destruction. Mm -hmm. And it's like a cycle that people go over. So mm -hmm. um, it's understandable where someone starts there. That's mm -hmm. the expression of their reality, which is morphed in this, this fear-based stuff. And mm -hmm. generally speaking, what I'll remind people of is the emotions sort of like trap you within this dimension. Yep. And as you start to express yourself, what happens is the 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 ones that are a lower vibrational per se, as you would perceive them, they just fall away. You can stay in a state of bliss, joy, and happiness, and that high level of consciousness. And from a Taoist perspective, it's like yin and yang, 
two sides of the mountain, you merge into one and express it as all things. When you truly are all things, I mean, I always look at people and they're like, look, I get into the state, I'm doing this healing, I wrap myself in protection, you really need to be protected. I'm like, if you truly believe and you yep. know in the core of yourself that you are the universe, who are you protecting yourself from? Yep. Yourself? Yourself? Yep. Yep. So you are me and I am you. That that embodiment is the every single time I've ever witnessed a manifestation, a healing, magic, however you want to integrate it into your reality, has been from the fact that all titles, they dissolve. Yep. And, and everything is as one. That's how you obtain the ability to alter this 3D reality. So if you want to witness a healing in this 3D reality, you must be able to merge as one. Yep. And so that that that's not going to happen when you're protecting yourself and you're making sure that their juju doesn't touch yours. And I mean, it, it sort of defeats the purpose, but in of itself, you start unraveling the semantics of someone's unconscious where they're mm -hmm. really stuck in that. They're mm -hmm. stuck in the, the idea that, you know, it's a brain and you got a left and a right brain and you compartmentalize things and you do all this stuff. And it's all, I always say, if you're coming from biology, psychology, neurology, uh, physiology, you're limited. Mm -hmm. This is not any of those things. What, mm -hmm. what Benny's experiencing, the charge that I'm getting just from sharing this space with this incredible being is not from this, it's not from this 3D reality. It's just not. And so you're expressing that and it's, and it's so profound and it just is, you know, and, and that mastery that you've acquired, because this is a great point that Benny makes is consistency is so critical to replicate and, and amplify. So you stay, you hold, hold the line as we might put it to that frequency to then level up to the next one. Mm hmm and mm -hmm. and it's and it's a it's really profound how it comes in. I want to hear more about. So you you started listening more to Abraham Hicks and things like channel is uh, similar yep. to her. What was your entry level into realizing? And tell us more about your channels, your guides, or explain to me how how it's given to you in your experience. I tell you what, when I when it first started. I'm trying to think now when it first started or around that time, I would be laying in the bed and I could feel presences only because my body would start vibrating differently. <laughs> and this is this is before I asked and it may be before it was Abraham, but I could feel the vibration would be different. Sometimes it would be it would be a high feeling. Sometimes it would be a really, really low feeling. And after, you know, I asked Abraham if that was positive or negative. And it was like, no, it's just different vibrations on different beings. It has nothing to do with good, bad or positive or negative. Uh, I remember one time a, a being was on me and spoke, was speaking to me. And I was perceiving like a conversation. And the vibration was so low, like a low bass type of feeling that it is almost like was disrupting my heartbeat. It was that low. Um but when I realized it was Abraham is when I started trying to type it out and I would be still and I would have my fingers on the computer and I, I perceived the information coming from this direction. It's always been the same. It comes down from this direction and I would type it out. And at first I would type and, and I would try to understand what was being communicated at the same time. And I would lose it and say, okay, I need to type it all the way out, <laughs> not worry about what's being said and then go back and do the spell, spell check and then read it. And then I got good. Then I got better at doing that. And then I started to trying to, you know, speak it out. of. And this, you know, this was way before I started doing videos. Then I started trying to speak it out of my mouth. And um, when I asked the question about whether it was Abraham or not, because it felt like it. And they said yes. And, then, you know, of course, I asked the question differences and Esther and all of these things. And it was like, there's lots of people. We're communicating through a lot of people. Right. And one of the I get asked that question about, you know, the difference between channels and what's the same Abraham. Was. And the analogy is imagine going up to a house in your neighborhood and they're having a party and the house is full of people. And, you know, the family, you know, the husband, wife, the children, you knock on the door, the husband comes to the door, you, you have a conversation and then you leave. And then you come back the same day, you knock on the door and the son opens the door. You have a conversation with the son and then you leave. Then you come back again and it's the mother. All different aspects of the same family. And that's Abraham, the collective. 
You may not be, I, I know that I'm not always speaking with the same entity in the collective. They feel different and the tonality and things are different. So I know it's not always the same entity or being in the Abraham collective. Well, you see, that's an, such a, a, a profound um, observation and, and insight for the audience. So, you know, I, I generally sort of channel my, my teachers. Mm -hmm. I have th um, the three pure ones and Latsu that I, 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 I yeah. share with every day, all day yeah. long, instant access. We, yeah. we're, we're, we're basically as one. Yes. And then, you know, I'll have experiences where I'll share that with the audience and Latsu will be present. And then I can channel my other my other in, immortals that are within this lineage, over 170 of them. Yes. And they're all just facets of frequency of, you know, information. Yes. And this is not a dismissal to them, but that's really when people start to understand this, this is what's really going on. So, you know, for them to slow down the the to materialize within this space and we can actually see them is a profound jump in, in mm -hmm. consciousness. So yeah. you're, you're going up or they're coming down, one of the two, but they're merging. And yeah. so, you know, you have this um, moment where I get a lot. I if, I if I leave my doors open, you know, I just had for the last two months, Dolores Cannon banging on my doorstep. Wow. I had Bell, Art Bell, Art Bell, who used to have a radio station, who would go about go on about paranormal? Now all this stuff seems so bizarre to me, but mm -hmm. I live in the desert, and the the Art Bell actually doesn't live too far from here. It's mm -hmm. like, and, and you go, what? Mm -hmm. Oh, what a coincidence! Another profound moment. And then you you have a lot of people, especially with Dolores Cannon, who's like, well, Dolores said she would never channel through anyone. She didn't believe in channeling. She was a reporter. Well, I can tell you. Very clearly, if I sit down with my my newfound friend here, Benny, and and he can experience this frequency, this is this is no joke, and the information is very clear, and and she has her own message. But moreover, I was going to say, I had the fiftieth anniversary of Bruce Lee, which I didn't know. Bruce Lee came to me, yeah, and so we had I had a two part thing that I put out on my channel where he went through the whole thing about his curse, how he got involved with it, all this stuff. And I'm just like, it just mind blowing to me yeah. how profound the information is. You have to create that state. And I, and I believe that most people are conceptual because they, they're the old fake it till you make it uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. and, and it's only just because they're really afraid, but they're excited. Yeah. They're yeah. excited, but they're afraid. Mm -hmm. And so, what I need the audience to understand is when you when you let that emotion control you, you're suggestible to contraction, not expansion. And and so the experience that, you know, if you remember what Benny said, uh, just for the audience recollection, recollection, is he said he had this incredible shift in emotional state and he literally popped out of his physical body and he was able to see all this other stuff. Now, that has a direct correlation with the mental emotional state and how you can level up to that level of consciousness. And it's like you acquire this sort of mastery. He got a glimpse, which most people get. And then he, he, he started to make it a repeatable thing. So we discovered how, okay, this is so profound. I need to, you know, process what, what am I going to do to repeat this? Because I want to experience this again. And so this is where a lot of people get lost. I feel. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you're 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 absolutely right. And it, it's it's fear that separate. We get the question a lot of that. You know, a lot of people want to channel now, mm -hmm. uh, but but there's a fear that separate that energy, that worry that there might the negative entity, positive entity. Yeah. All of that stuff is separation. Yeah. Right? Yep. 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 You you got to be comfortable. You got to know. You got to know that. There's different levels of frequency, vibration. Get yourself into a high vibration. Get yourself mm -hmm. into excitement, into joy, into love. And if the law of attraction is true, law of reflection, all that, if all of that stuff is true, then you're aligning yourself with beings, people that love you, support, that are of that frequency. That's all you have to do. And it's not a complicated thing, right? Yeah. We teach people that, you know, they want to, they're working on their vibration. 
and they and they asked the question. We had it this couple weekends ago in the workshop. They're asking the question about how do they get in a higher vibration. Do you have a favorite song? <laughs> do you right. have a favorite song? Right. You can use a favorite color. All of these things that they get you into a higher vibration, a favorite color or the entire rainbow, the, the vibration of the color is pure and it'll lift you. Right. It's this, not complicated. It's well, not uh, well complicated. Yeah, you are just like saying the sacred source. And, I, you know, just to to help the audience look over Benny's material, look over my material. I put together a video specifically on how to acquire a manifestation instantaneously. And it starts with a feeling. And so that, you know, you could take any song and I, I use that as a reference point, take any song, just as Benny just said, and you get the chorus, the stuff that like gets you the shivers, yep. the shakes, the, the, the hair raising stuff that creates the magic, the excitement that you get. And you connect with that artist because that artist is expressing themselves yep. through that music. That's why it, you're attuning yourself. And, you yep. know, for me, I could go everything, you know, I, you know, for me, let's take TLC, man. Uh, yep. I, I love that. I, I'm just tuning into that stuff. And I've, I've had some of the most profound healings with people that are tuned to music. And then I use TLC as an example. They're like, TLC? What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. Every single person has a frequency they're, they're transmitting. And when they imprint that into that music, that is why it's affecting you. Yep. That is why you're having a profound effect. That's why you gravitate to it or you repel from it because of that frequency. Yep. And it's coming out of the music. And just yep. as Benny said, it's like, start with the gateway. And, you know, you can literally manifest magic, healing, anything, just starting with that frequency. And, and you know, when you say um, we talk about the fear part, so many people really are... Um, and that, when I say fake it till you make it, not in a, a, a condescending or dismissal way. I, I want everyone to experience this. But understand this. You only know what you know. You don't know what you don't know. And so until that consciousness is, the, the veil is lifted, as they would put it, until you merge the conscious and unconscious process, so you are operating 100. And that's completely, that's how Benny lives his life. That's how I live my life, to to obtain levels of like consciousness, the, yep. the ones we speak of, the ones that we transmit, the ones that we share with our audiences, comes from that state. You you can't you you cannot um, be dabbling in the duality of the limitations of a human being to ap acquire this and maintain it. It'll be muddied with a lot of different stuff, and that's that part where you, uh, Benny was talking about. Yeah, I, I I'm there when I when whenever I need to be, I'm there but I want to embody it more in my every everyday process. And that's just something that, you know, it, it all, it all happens. It's kind of like this burning, like a uh, uh, light or heat that you put on something. And the more and more you return to that frequency, the, 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 um, if the, the infantile processes of being this sort of caught in this emotional state start to dissipate. And, and it's a much easier transfer. Like you can go, you know what? I, I, I'm i not doing the emotional stuff today. I, you know, I've been over this. I, I, this is like a, an absolute vortex, a drain. So it starts mentally, emotionally. And then all of a sudden, physically, why am I exhausted? Oh, <laughs> I get it. I yeah. get it. I really, I, I, uh, fool me once, fool me twice, fool me three, three times. As, as J judge Judy would say, don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining, sir. And you're like, you're like, whoa. And I mean, that's really this cycle. It's like the simplicity of it. What are your thoughts on that, Benny? Yeah, it's, um, you know, one of the things that we repeat to people is that this is a process um, that it starts intellectually. You're taking this information and you have to kind of keep repeating yourself because we've all been before birth conditioned to a lower vibration you're getting conditioned vibrationally energetically before you come out of your mother's womb if she was having a a great time and was feeling loved and and, and joy and all those things before you were born then those are the type of energies that you were in if she was not having a great time those were the type of energies you were in and you were getting conditioned from that point everybody has to understand that 
they are conditioned, they are programmed, and the words you use, the unraveling, we use that all the time. You have to start unraveling that stuff, right? And reconditioning yourself. And the thing about the vibration piece, just reaching for a higher vibration, whatever you use to feel good, to get yourself into a higher state over the course of the day, has a huge impact because you're reconditioning your whole body, every cell, every particle to a new energy expression. And just like going to the gym, the stronger you get working with weights, it's the exact same thing with your vibration, your frequency. If you're consistent and you're reaching for higher, you're reconditioning your whole body to a new level of frequency. And that affects the contents of your mind. It affects your expansion and your awareness and that which you are capable of allowing in. And the more things you are capable of allowing in and the more you expand, you don't go, you can't go backwards. You don't go backwards. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, this is great. I mean, when people always bring up like, well, how does, how does God allow, you know, megalomaniacs like, you know, Hitler or Mao or someone that's just uh, 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 created some atrocity on humanity. And I'm like, what happens is if you notice they all fall and they're like, yeah, that's true. And, and this is not to do, people need to understand, it has to do with duality, but it more has to do with, you know what it has to, has to do with it? Everyone's like, well, what? It has to do with, they stop believing their rhetoric. And so they fall back into, instead of embracing their megalomaniac, psychotic frequency that is, is, uh, is in, you're incapable to shake it. And mm -hmm. so they believe that, you know, death and destruction is reality. All of a sudden they fall into, understanding that oh my goodness i'm afraid there's karma behind this i'm afraid mm -hmm. there's something so they fall into this duality aspect so they're not buying their rhetoric anymore and so they separate mm -hmm. and they're not they're they're maintaining an even lower frequency than the one they were already doing that put a psychosis over mass amounts of people and mm -hmm. then they fall to their own fate which is the thing that very thing they fear the most mm -hmm. and, and so collaborative and, Components. And the collaborative components come together with them to create that experience. Everything involved is, is in some way, whether unconscious or unconscious, on the same vibration. And they come together. And people miss the fact that this is all human mind, human consciousness, in duality, good, bad, right, wrong. And, and people ask the question about good, bad, and right, wrong. And it's like, this is the human mind, because when you look outside in nature, you don't say that the tiger is good, bad, right, or wrong for eating a gazelle. It just is, right? It's just an experience. There's no good, bad about it. And it's an energy thing. It's a vibration thing. It's a creation of experience thing. Well, you see, this is so profound what you're hitting on, my friend. So for the audience, what Benny's getting to is also the manipulation of a human thing. So now all of a sudden you, you pepper in something that other species are not familiar with is the ability to think about past and present not and future. Any, any other species is just in that present moment and yep. they're not operating in the idea that all of a sudden, hang on, the universe has a moral compass. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but, no. But, but when you pepper in the emotional stuff, then all of a sudden you can have some type of like cycle of manipulation as a human being and not only other people, but yourself. And then that's the misdirection. And that's mm -hmm. where, you know, to acquire a higher consciousness. And I, I would affirm for myself that it's not about dismissing your personality because that's what you, you're yeah. expressing yourself in this humanness, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is an expression of you, but your ability, as Benny said, to master shifting states, right? Mm -hmm. So your, your personality doesn't go anywhere. If you're, if you're on a journey, and this is my realization, and I've been teaching people 30 years, it's not to, to a death of your personality. It's your ability to shift out of that, that state. It's a consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's all it is, and shift mm -hmm. to a higher consciousness and be able to maintain that for whatever it is. Like mm -hmm. for my purpose, my li my life purpose here is to awaken people to their in the internal power. That's mm -hmm. it. To mm -hmm. share with them. So it's a collective thing. As you obtain a frequency and you maintain it, it then transmutes out into your very 
surroundings, which ripples out into more and more and more and more. And the higher the consciousness, all of a sudden, the idea that we can live in a place of uh, just complete love, bliss and happiness and being content is not delusional in of itself. Would it be the perfect place? I'm not so sure, um, but I would definitely be interested to see what happens as Benny and I continue to share this this message or understanding of being able to acquire consciousness, what really takes place. Because today, more than any other time in history, you and I could get on our cell phone on the internet and look up on Yelp. And I use Yelp, which is a great, bad reference point. But Yelp has 500 psychics, 500 mediums, 500 channelers, healers. This is never before in history. Right. Five years ago, 10 years ago, you're three cents short of a dollar, my friend. I don't know right. what you're on. You're there's something right. there's something a little off about you, and you seem right. to not share. For me, I've sort of operated in the last thirty years, and maybe under not even the veil, but under the 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 benign appearance of I'm a priest teaching you internal alchemy within Taoism. Oh, that's so nice. What a philosophy. Yeah, <laughs> that's a nice philosophy. But in essence. When you show someone a miracle, they would perceive a miracle where you can shift this 3D reality before their very eyes and they go, okay, that's not a figment of my imagination. That really took place. That physical healing took place. That mental, emotional healing took place. That spiritual healing took place. Right. And I am forever changed. Absolutely. And do 1, not is, can't what do, do you not, think on that? Right. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it's like, you have to be able to bring it. I, I'm a show me guy. I, I want you to bring, I want you to show me. I want to be blown away by the access of what happens when you attune yourself to you. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. It's so exciting. But mm -hmm. over the years when I've, you, you, you have many classes in teaching people channeling. Is that something that you, you do often or? We, we get asked the question. We, ha we we don't really, we haven't started trying to teach people to channel yet, but we get asked the question and we give, okay. you know, suggestion on it, which is, you know, connecting vibrationally, get yourself into a high vibration, set time where you are a consistent time frame, whatever it is, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, where you just sit still and be aware of any potential communication, you yeah. know, if you do that long enough, even in meditation, if you do it long enough, you can tell when it's your mind jumping back and forth to different things, or if it's a stream of communication that that's something that makes sense, like somebody's actually talking to you. So just be still, get into a high vibration, be still, and see what happens. Maybe, maybe not, but put yourself in that position with the intention of connecting. That's that's the suggestion. When we're well, asking. yeah, and I mean, I I, I love that suggestion. You know, I've, over the years, I've taught a lot of people channeling and more so when I get people involved in like a priest class, they might want to train yes. them over years. And, mm -hmm. you know, you get you get people that are are, are immersed in more a Hollywood um, version. Now, when 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 we say that, you know, I, I'll, I'll I'll tell anyone that part of the things that I teach people is psychic mediumship channeling. They're all sensory perception in yeah. my opinion. So, you know, we can go down any channel you want. That's fine. But it's a sensory perception of of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when we come to the subject of exorcism, absolutely. How is that possible? Okay. Um, it's because it's part of what you desire to witness. Mm. What, what, what are you talking about? It's a creation that someone has created that frequency, that energy that brought it into their experience yes and this is how we're working with it you need to understand this so people are like well what does that mean i'm like well if you look at these creations of like uh the these horror characters freddy krueger jason Voorhees, whatever oh this is hollywood stuff no it absolutely has a signature and a frequency and an energy to it yes and people are like excuse me i'm like these all started from the seed of someone's dark place in their mind yep to Absolutely. express this and it's rippled out into what you perceive as a Hollywood movie and it can stay there but the more you entertain that you will bring that frequency in if that's what you desire that's that's for you to desire now 
I can go years without having to do an exorcism. And when I say exorcism, it's like literally like that. So you watch the energy removed from this person because I've had students that have had clingers. I call them clingers, stage five clingers, where they'll come back one week, you'll exercise all these lower frequencies, and they'll come back the next week with a couple of hundred because they they fantasize about this Hollywood slayer exorcist yeah. hour. And, you know, they bring it to them. Only they're very fearful. It's like it's this excitement about standing at the edge of the cliff and they're af afraid of heights, but they want to stand there. It's like, oh, I'm yeah. still really afraid. And, and that's mm -hmm. completely okay. But understand that you can continue to repeat these type of things and, and meet with these type of energies and these spirits over and over again, and you will stay stuck in the weeds. Because that's a lower frequency and you need to be able to identify with that and how you're acquiring that into your, your very experience. And that's, it's just an awareness. Okay. Now, how is it transmuted into something om ominous? That's your experience. That's, that's what you're bringing in. This is, this is what you're molding and creating. It starts from the seat of you. And then all of a sudden it comes in and then you're like, okay, well, I can either entertain this or i can say no thank you very much it's time to move on i'm going i'm 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 going higher being in here than out here where you get these sort of like uh succubus whatever you want to call it and i mean in in once it's gone and then i'll disappear i won't see anything for 10 years then i'll come across someone who's completely infatuated with this idea and i, I it's never to be dismissed because it's everyone's experience but understand right. that it's not it, it once you realize you are the universe, yep. this stuff does it just doesn't come up. You're not it, right. you just won't find you're not gonna find it. It just doesn't, it's just not present. And so I love the um lately there's been a lot of people talking about their perception of the the dimensions beyond this one. And like they talk about how how what what is the experience once you go out there well a lot of people when they say they go out there they don't realize they're going inside but mm -hmm. let's just say hey i go out and and i'm going out there and i'm exploring all this stuff now for me when i get past this 3d reality it expands to like a a, a threshold where it literally enters into phosphorus white light for mm -hmm. what seems to be days and then i'll have a break in it and it'll be complete darkness and what i've discovered is the break between the white and the, the the phosphorus white light and the complete darkness is what we call within Taoism Wu Ji, which is the stillness. And then you can step off into however many variations of whatever you want to experience within that scene. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, making, yeah. making me it's making me feel and think interesting, a place that I was reminded of this weekend. It's making me feel and think of just dealing with some expectation of, of family members. And it's making me feel and think of the space where you realize that you're not anything and everything at the same time, right? Not anything and everything at the same time. And the attachments are not there. The expectations are not there. But at the same time, you are being that you at the same time, you're whole and you're full and, the, the, and you realize there's nothing else that you need, which means that you're not giving off any type of fear. You're not giving off any type of low vibration that can be reflected back to you in a not so great fashion. Right. And, and that, that's what that makes me. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I mean, this is sort of like and and I've explored consciously probably what what would it be equivalent if I started counting it out, at least 30 or 50 dimensions like that. Mm, mm. And so, you know, the, the, it it's becomes palpable. So, for to explain it to the audience, it's like for for this to be tangible and validated within my own consciousness, there's a degree what what most people um, miss, they get a misdirection is when you ascend, the energy doesn't get lighter. It gets actually more dense. And so a lot of people are like, what? But I've heard people say, when, when, when we get out there, it's so light, you can't fit. 
This is a tuning fork, ladies and gentlemen. This is a tuning fork that is is used for your experience. How, no matter where you're perceiving your consciousness, this is the thing that's validating all of it. Yes. So instead of like, you know, this is the the the, the little a tuner that gives you and validates what you are experiencing wherever you are mm -hmm. through this tuning fork. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, you hear a lot of the stories more recently in the last 12 months where people are going deep into, I've seen, I've seen it. It's 12, it's 12 dimensions. It's the Akashic records. It's this, it's that it's the holes of a mente. And these are all really profound things for that person. I need people to understand that, that for, for that person, they are don't, don't be dissuaded or confused and disheartened because you're hearing a story about someone's experience right. that is saying that this is it and you're not experiencing that. People need to understand this because everyone's experience is their own mm -hmm. and there are no exceptions to the rule. The mm -hmm. only time that it is altered is when you can take whatever frequency you're, you're, you're tapping into and bring it into this 3D reality and validate it with yourself. Validate it with a manifestation. Validate it with a healing. Validate it with magic. When I say magic, it's more a, a more finely tuned manifestation. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, I, yeah. I mean, Taoists have been doing it for thousands of years. So we really have a our whispers of the universe is the inner core of our guiding, a guiding to all things that are, that are re realized within. The, the Chinese like uh, um, um, infrastructure and culture today has all started from you know the Jade Emperor and the Yellow Emperor thousands of years ago, transmitting the whispers of the universe that have generated the foundations of traditional Chinese medicine, the ecostructure, everything that is realized within China has come from those seeds. Yeah, because people are like, whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, Jade Emperor, Yellow Emperor were deep into the energetics. That's mm -hmm. how it started. That's the seed of everything. And people move away from that and they get into the sort of like more um, dense sort of alternatives, but everyone comes home. What I've mm -hmm. realized, I, I mean, I've worked with mm -hmm. chiropractors, doctors of Chinese mm -hmm. medicine, psychologists, mm -hmm. uh, doctors, mm -hmm. you name it, I've worked with them. And all that stuff is a muted variation Yes. Of what is so pure, and yes. nothing is more powerful than the energy. Yes, and so they always come back. Have you? What do you say about that? What well, is that's one of the things that we try to help people with. Focus on your vibration first, even before you have a manifestation that you want to that you want to create. Focus on your vibration because the energy of you and the energy of whatever you want to create is energy first. Everything has an energy presence first, and that sounds like what you're, what you're yeah. talking about. So, yeah. like, take your eyes off of the life that you want. Take your eyes off the money and the relationships and all of that stuff, and start working on your energy presence. Start working on your energy expression. Start trying to lift it and do that. And then, once you get a handle on that and you see how it's affecting your experience, just your energy is affecting your experience. Then you get stronger where you can begin to start working on, okay, I want to create this in my life. And you've got the energy. You're able to be consistent in your energy offering when you start entertaining an idea of a thing or actual experience, right? And you're working at your foundation. That's what we try to offer people also. You know, work yeah. on the energy first. Now, now you hit on a great, um, uh, a great opener, Benny. So Let's talk about that. Like for me, I always remind people there are three ingredients to your experience, a thought, feeling, and an emotion. That's it. Mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. what? What? That's it. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you do with that is now another thing. Now, for, for a Taoist, we go into the internal alchemy and, and it needs to be palpable. And I always remind people, if you're thinking, you're not knowing, if you're knowing, you're feeling. The feeling is critical, which brings us back to the energy. Yeah. And so having a palpable experience of transmission, knowing that it's solidified, not just in your mind, but tangible. And so the cultivation practices, in my opinion, and I'm very biased, <laughs> we, have a, we have a system that is very 
it's it's thousands of years old and it's repeatable. And once you acquire it, anyone can acquire it. I just teach people. It's like, how do you want to be real palpable? What, what do you think Bruce Lee was doing? He was chasing the dragon literally. And it, and it wasn't something um, external that's a, a sort of like a, a drug. It was the dragon that was inspiring him to realize one with the Tao mm -hmm. and that energy was what he wanted. He wanted that more than anything was acquiring that internal alchemy. So how do you help people find this resonation, this energy? Do you have some type of like processes that helps them get there? Well, the, the first thing that we look at as far as the energy, like we said, Focusing on the energy and, and just becoming aware, first of all, that you're offering these different vibrations and that there, there's a difference between your emotions and your feelings. Your emotions come and go and you can see them rise and fall within the body. But you have feelings that are connected to your ideas or your belief systems that are constant. Boom. That are constant. Mind blower. I don't want to interrupt you, but I need the audience <laughs> to understand what Benny's giving you right now. This is like gold. Yeah. This is like gold. This is like you are Indiana Jones with that golden, you know, head in your hand going, oh, my goodness, I just found the 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 essence, because this is what Benny's speaking of is understanding there is a separation. And I remind people of this thoughts, emotions and feelings, they're catalysts. Mm -hmm. And so they're very different. People mm -hmm. always go, the emotion is the feeling. No, 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 no. Oh, whoa, no. whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's slow down. So please elaborate with the audience the differentiator of the feeling and the emotion and how it works for you in helping them. Yeah. Well, what you just said, your thoughts, feelings, and emotions, they're all different. At the same time, they're connected. Because you can, if you start thinking a thing, you can create, you, and that can be the catalyst for the emotion. Or you can see a thing outside of you and it can be the catalyst for the emotion and make you start thinking all manner of things in alignment with that emotion. Now, your feelings are closely connected to your dominant ideas and you're constantly resonating certain types of feelings, certain vibrations based on your dominant ideas that you have. And I've got a story. Me and my wife went for our anniversary a couple of years ago to Florida. And this is the first time that we have went on a vacation per se for longer than three four days we went for like eight days and it took me three days to relax now our va my vacation time was normally two three at the most four days from growing up to that point it took me three days to relax and to realize that we're not going home for like at least like another week still right <laughs> so i looked at that and i'm like wow i am constantly believing in a scarcity of time i'm constantly stuck in the need to move need to do because i'm there's a scarcity of time that's what i've got right now scarcity of time but i'm constantly resonating i, I had to release and let that feeling go and i felt that feeling go when i realized i don't have to rush we've got plenty of time we're not i can't I, we're not leaving for a, at least for another week and I realized that it was, and it was a heavy type feeling that I've never been aware of before, but it had to do with time. So knowing that and everyone listening, you have ideas within you. If you live in, in the West, you have ideas about time because we feel constricted, like we're always in a rush. You have ideas about time. You have, you potentially have ideas about around lack and scarcity around dis-ease <clears throat> <clears throat> that are dominant ideas that you have been taught, that you've been conditioned to, that you are resonating unconsciously because of the idea. And that is a feeling that you're constantly offering and you're not going to be aware of it until you look inward and, and see it. It's not an emotion because emotions come and go. You can see yourself starting to get upset and then 10, in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it's not there anymore. You can see your thoughts running through your mind. Right. But those feelings are tied to things that ideas that you are believing in that are dominant within your the unconscious regions of your mind, unconscious meaning you're not aware of them that are causing you to resonate certain things that are 
sourcing experiences that are consistent. And it's because you're offering that vibration consistently, whether you realize it or not. And that goes back to that unraveling. You got to look inward to start finding those ideas that you're offering that are holding you in certain experiences that you don't desire. Yeah, that, that, it's interesting. So, you know, for the audience, so emotions will evoke the feeling. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, understanding that I, I kind of get people to sort of realize that you don't, your emotions don't control you, you control your emotions. And people mm -hmm. are like, oh, that's kind of scary. Well, that sounds really testosterone like. Absolutely not. You need to understand that that's the lie, that's the simulation, that's the distraction. And yep. the faster you come to this realization, let's get on with it. Let's experience this yes. incredible realization yep. of how powerful the connection of oneness is. And so when people sort of like, when I teach someone how to take their emotions and put it in the corner and go, sit, stay, and people are like, that sounds crazy. Not really. No, because it's a separator. And, and yep. that's, that, uh, that's that common theme that Benny and I are speaking about, the feeling Mm -hmm. And when you have that feeling, you can shift that instantly. Mm -hmm. Like I have an emotion normally within, you know, processes when you're, when you're, you're on the road to becoming a priest or whatnot, you have this time frame, and you get trained in this. It's like, you should be able to experience this and disperse it within like four seconds, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's generally the, the cycle or rule of thumb. And once you acquire it, anyone can do that. Yeah, like I teach people to, to it starts with a visual audible experience, creating the kinesthetic charge, mm -hmm. and that kinesthetic charge is the validator of where you're at, and so you should be able to attune to that feeling at any point, dismissing and dissolving mm -hmm. the emotional and the thoughts that come with it. It will it will disperse all of it, and mm -hmm. and and people are like, holy moly, this really is this this works. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, one thousand percent, it works, and you can take it to the bank anytime. And as Benny mentioned before, it's that repeatable theme, and you must, you know, express it more and more. You express it, and what I've realized is, <clears throat> I use the Pinto model analogy, and people are like Pinto, how bizarre is that? I'm like, you're driving around in the Pinto, mm -hmm. and you've been hanging out with me or Benny, or and you're in your Pinto, and then I go stop. Okay, we've been hanging out for a while. Pull over, go to the front of the car, open the hood. Okay, open the hood, and there's a Lamborghini engine in there. And everyone's like, oh, how did, I, how did this Lamborghini engine get in the Pinto? Because you're cultivating and, and reaffirming, reinforcing this experience, and you're leveling up on your consciousness. And as you do that, you're able to access it so it becomes more concentrated. So something that perhaps you might have started on, your journey of, of, of cultivating may have taken you a certain period of time. At a certain point, it's, it's, it will become instantaneous. It'll become yes. like, a, oh, you think it and it's realized. Um, yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the attunement. That's, that's part of what Benny and I are speaking of. Mm -hmm. And anyone can acquire that once they get the conditioning, as you put it. The conditioning is the validation. And how do you do that through this physical offering? But then it becomes beyond that. So it's conscious and, and unconscious, or I like to call it conscious, subconscious, and unconscious. Mm -hmm. that, that's sort of a Taoist model. Mm -hmm. But most people are like, there's only two. Well, actually, it depends on how you perceive it, right? right. But there are definitely grades of variables. And so when you're able to merge those, all of a sudden, all bets are off. And that feeling will guide you and everything. And you can always start back here with what I call the truth teller to give you an indicator of contraction, expansion, contraction, expansion. What are your <laughs> thoughts on that, Benny? <clears throat> I'm trying to, as, as you were talking, I was seeing the, the parallels between what, you, what you're sharing with individuals and, and what we have been sharing with individuals. The when you look at the vibration and a person cultivating a higher vibration, the, the, the more you play with that and then you experience the world and you experience something that normally gets you to a lower vibration, the higher the vibration you play in, the more distance there is for you to fall to get to that old point. And 
the more you condition yourself to hire, the faster you, what you just said about the time frame, you should be able to stop yourself. You're able to catch yourself before you get there and then turn your attention away from it. The higher the frequencies that you're playing in. That's why you want to focus on playing with the higher frequencies because you get stronger in creating that space between yourself and lower vibrational experiences. Simultaneously, the higher frequencies begin to disrupt everything of lower vibration because it's almost like you're creating a different, a different ground, right? You, certain seeds you can plant into a ground and it grows a certain thing. And then another seed may not grow in that ground. Well, everything of low vibration that has been your norm, when you play in a higher vibration, it's not the same, it's not the right ground for the lower vibration. So what people have to know is that they don't just disappear. They start to bubble up because the oh, the higher frequency makes things come up so that they become conscious instead of unconscious. And one of the things that we share with people is that your inner being is there to help you. You can go into, let's say meditation, as this is a short version description. You can go into meditation. You can ask your inner being to support you in what is it that's within me that conflicts with this experience that I'm wanting to create? And it will show you on the screen of your mind. Your imagination is not a one-way window where you put things on it, say, visualizing. If you go in and you ask the question, your inner being will present you on the screen of your mind, whether whatever is dominant for you, whether it's an imagery or a feeling, it'll present you the things inside of you that are resisting. And then you can work with your inner being to release it, to find out the truth of you in source that it's not going to, those ideas are not going to be there. And then once you're able to release those ideas, you also ask, okay, well, who am I that is free of these ideas, that is absent of these ideas? See what that person looks like and sow that into you so those seeds can begin to develop into the new you that you're creating. And that, that's the short version of it, but it's very similar. It's very similar to what you're offering as well. Yeah, it's, a, it's really powerful stuff. I, I kind of remind people that with this new awakening that you're experiencing by being aware, because it's really just being aware, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, people need to also understand that with that, as you uh, just as you, it's so poetic, so beautiful the way you said it, your your the lower frequency is now being disrupted. So what does that mean? And they're like, well, I, I explained to them what that means is is now you're operating in a higher frequency and you may just be dipping in and out of it as you become more comfortable, take the training wheels off and you stay there. But what happens is that disrupts your very ex ex external environment. Yes. So that frequency. So all of a sudden you're aware of, hang on, before um, this experience, I was really happy with, my husband being condescending to me and just dismissing me. And I was just sort of sitting in the corner of the room, just twiddling my thumbs. And, and she, he just sort of was very passive, but uh, he just paid me to be quiet. And so all of a sudden, this is how you perceived it before you were awakened. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, because you're awakened to it, you're starting to notice that this relationship is not the same as what I perceived it was. Mm -hmm. It has, He hasn't changed. I've changed. Yes. But now, now that frequency is now disrupting his interaction with me. And in anything, it's raising the uncomfortable feeling that he's having because his emotions are coming up. Right. And he's realizing that this frequency that I'm maintaining is making him feel evoked that it's me, it's not you. So, so all of a sudden, um, there's conflict and resistance there because the polarizing effects of that is affecting his stability because he's yep. used to this lower stuff and yep. then of course what happens is i coined this as sort of, sort of goofy but it just came out of nowhere i call it hillbilly hand fishing mm -hmm. and people are like what is that well you just have a bucket full of your emotions they rise right up and you just reach in and grab one toss it out it's like one after the other now the the mastery is to realize the emotions when they raise up don't attach them to a place, person, or thing. Realize they are nothing more than that, and they will just disappear. And if you create that foundation and you say it's so, it will be realized. Yep. And people are like, really? And this is where people go through this. Um, and and uh, uh, I, I'm going to speak on this, actually, in one of my podcasts this week, the dark night of the soul, mm -hmm. right? So they have this definition of their experience. And, you know, um, 
and some people stay there. They like it. It's like, hang on a second. What are you talking about? I like it. No, they stay in the dark night of the soul and they have for a long time because it's a, it, it's their perception. I understand this has got nothing to do with anything more than how they're identifying with uh, titles, um, the way they process their experience, that they gravitated to this concept, which is dark night of the soul, and then they materialize and make it real in their reality. Yep. And that's their now their journey. That's their experience. And then it comes down to more foundational stuff like uh, soul contracts, soul, you know, um, 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 association. There's a, there's a bunch of different variables and coined words that people use. Understand that if this is not happening to you, it's because you're not gravitating or resonating with this information and right. it's completely okay. Don't be concerned or deflated or disheartened because I'm not experiencing this dark night of the soul that you speak of, or I'm not finding, you know, um, the soul contract or the, the, I mean, there are so many variables and I find that personally, from my experience, the more and more you compartmentalize these things, the more and more you get distracted and removed from just being one with the frequency. Right. And, and, and that's just my observation. But people have their own way of coming to their conscious awareness. Mm -hmm. But this whole point of like the frequency. And so what happens is once Benny and I've experienced, uh, shared this with the audience and they start resonating in a higher frequency, you're bringing this higher frequency into a 3D reality. So yeah. now we're working with the polarizing effects of duality. And so if you're coming in here with a high frequency and someone else is not aware of that and they're just operating their very day, they're going to either be two things happen. They either gravitate to you or they're yep. repelled. Or repel. This is something I've, no I've noticed over and over again. What are your thoughts on that? Well, th and then from there, when a person becomes aware of that, the question is, how strong are you to hold it? Right. Can you hold it and not be affected, not react to the shifts that other people are making based on your frequency? Mm -hmm. That's the question. And you want to grow into it. One of the, there was something you said earlier and at the beginning that we wanted to say something about the, the, the misinterpretation of focusing on yourself. And it could be the idea of being feeling like you're being selfish or being told to be selfish. Now, the misunderstanding is that most people have the idea of being selfish and looking inside themselves and focusing on themselves from a low vibrational standpoint. Being selfish in this spiritual growth and development game is a completely different thing <laughs> when you look at it from a high vibration, right? And, here, and here's the, uh, the, an example or, or analogy. If you focus on yourself to be the absolute best, selfishly focus on yourself to be a brilliant parent, to be the absolute best parent you can be, it's not only to the benefit to you, but it's to the benefit of your children. If you focus on being the absolute most brilliant being who is human that you can be, selfishly, it's to the benefit of everybody that you come in contact with. So the perspective is different when we say, be selfish about this game. Be selfish about your growth and expansion. And we don't shy away from saying you're going to be powerful. For you are powerful. You've just been conditioned out of it. And we mean powerful from a high vibrational standpoint, which means that your life is affected highly and beautifully, and everybody you come in contact with is affected highly and beautifully. It's not what you have been taught. We want you to be powerful. We want you to be amazing. We want you to be brilliant. We want you to experience life and grow in life from peak to peak. Yes, people choose to experience suffering and pain. You have been a king and you have been the poorest of the poor. But once you become conscious that you're creating and you start get to the point where you're able to follow your inspirations, you can grow from peak to peak. And it doesn't have to be from pain to pain or or in suffering. I mean, uh, amen to that, brother. I'm telling you because it's so profound what Benny's saying right now. Understand this. It's like if you want to just compartmentalize this only to a something that people are familiar with, the secret laws of attraction, whatever. Like attracts like. Let's just make it real simple. 
You want more of the same. You People always ask me every day, it's like, well, how are you doing? And I'm like, it's good to be me. <laughs> it's, it's really that simple. And, yeah. and, and so, you know, I spend all my time helping and healing people surrounded by my six kids and my wife all day long. That's my manifestation. That's it. Yeah. That's all. That's all I do. And, and, and this understanding and realization is this, you're, you're, you're filtering this stuff as Benny has put it. It's like, you've got this per, per, perceived idea that there's yeah. this sort of like moral compass yeah. and, you know, Oh my goodness. If I feel like I'm more powerful, that's an egotistical thing. Oh, I, no, 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 no. I can't go there. I can't, but you're conditioned to think this way. You're yeah. conditioned to feel small. You're yeah. conditioned to, to compartmentalize. You're conditioned to think you're conditioned to, to um, step away and don't possibly embody everything as one. You're, so when I talk about selflessness, it's a it's a default that comes with a high realization. You yep. are the universe. That's yep. what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a, a virtue signaling expression, which is something that comes from the Tao Te Ching. We always speak on this. If you act in virtue, you have none. It's really that simple because there's that need. It's like, I read the book. It told me if I read the Bible every day and I take my shirt off my back and I hand everything to the community and I, you know, I go and I take all these homeless people and I put them in my house and have them live there because I'm doing them a good service. Actually, you're not doing them a good service. You're doing them a disservice because when you realize that someone is in that place where they've created this sort of state, help them step out of that. Mm -hmm. That's, that's it. I mean, once they realize that they have access as we all do, mm -hmm. that's one. Mm -hmm. They can go from being homeless to a billionaire in five seconds. Mm -hmm. It's really that simple. And it's mm -hmm. just that awareness. And of course, you need to also be able to identify that perhaps in if, if you're in the processes, uh, uh, do you believe in incarnation, reincarnation, things of this nature? So understanding that, this mightn't be their re-up, this one. Yes. And it's okay if they're not re-upping. It's okay. Not everyone. I, I would... I would my my desire, my selfish desire is that everyone experience what Betty and I are speaking of. And that I know that if someone comes into my path, it's for a level of awakening and, and expansion. And that's just my realization. That's what I've discovered over mm -hmm. my journey. And that, you know what? Also, there are some people that know uh, um, I'm, I'm into the uh, No, I want the suffering. It's, it's good. I want to, when it, when it's the wet ass hour, that final moment, I want to be that person going, wow, it's brighter than I thought it was. Some one liner that, you know, <laughs> Steve Jobs put out or something like that. That was like the last thing he said in this 3D reality lives. It's way brighter. Yeah, absolutely. But we're, we're right here to share with you guys that you can have that way brighter moment. Now you don't yeah. have to be waiting until you yeah. you you have to transition to another yeah. Um, experience what are your thoughts on that yeah absolutely that's what we say all the time you know uncover your true nature in source now so that you can live from that place that's what exactly what you just said that's what we want that's yeah. what and i you know that carrot's been dangling in front of me saying for twice now one time and this has been years ago i was doing a meditation where i was like walking down the stairs to go deeper in my imagination i was going downstairs yeah, yeah. and it felt like everything whisked off of me, everything being cares, doubt, worry, whisk off of me. And it was like a free air feeling in my body and it scared me. And so I was immediately out of it. The second time, the second time it happened, I set up a table, blankets and stuff, going to give my wife a massage. And I was using my intuition to guide me on where to go on her legs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it happened again. And this time it lingered for like 20 minutes. And I felt like I could do anything. And but the reason I felt like I could do anything, I could call anyone, I could call a president or anybody without any hesitation. Wasn't because of something that was put on me. It was because of what wasn't there. It was what wasn't there that I felt that way, which means that what the stuff that I have inside and had inside of me is masking over everybody that's listening to this, 
you have things and ideas and beliefs and perspectives that are masking over the true you in source that you can experience right now, right? And something you said earlier about the ideas, and one of the things we come in contact with is people, the idea of value and their expression of the absence of value that limits them. And even this is even people that are healers and 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 wanting to do things in business and they have the information and they have great, a lot of them are already started on that path, but their own self value is what's slowing them down. Their own self value is what's often causing them to sabotage the things that they are inspired to do. And they know they're inspired. It creates immense conflict. You have to understand that that value piece is huge because that allows you to just go try without being worried about, rejection or anything coming back to you in a negative fashion. And then we also want to throw out that source that is even considered value. So what does that look like? Because a flower doesn't need to be concerned itself about being worthy of the sun. Right? Source doesn't even consider the idea of value. So who are you without the consideration of value, without the consideration of worth? or any of these things that are perpetuated in the human mind. That's what we're talking about, getting beyond and finding out who you really are in source that is free of all of this stuff and being able to follow your inspirations from that place. And the third thing, <laughs> <laughs> I, we just mentioned about the vibration. We talk to people about your vibration and being able to, you were talking about, individuals coming in contact with people that may not understand or may be in a place where they're suffering or having trouble and being able to you know, bring them into your home and say you're doing a good thing. Your energy, your vibration, just your vibration alone, without any words or without any action, if you have holding or strong enough to hold a level of vibration and allow them the opportunity to tune up to you, what you said, in their moving up even a small fraction, ideas are able to come in that allow them to move out of their situation. It has to do with their energy. Their, your energy presence, each one who is growing and developing in their ability to express a higher vibration and be from that place, that's the expressing of the light that can spark another if they're ready for it. Yeah, I mean, wow. Yeah. It, it, profound messaging because it really comes down to the absence of moral compass perception of humanness. These are all distractions and they make you very limited. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, uh, it comes right from the Tao. One of my teachers, the Jade Emperor always says, if you believe you are not of this body, what can harm you? Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. that, that simplicity Right. Yeah, and I mean, and and I said, I remember decades ago, I mentioned that to my mother, and her first reaction was, "I don't want to die." Well, you're not going to die. It's not. It's not about. This is where your. This is your perception of reality, and so all of a sudden, there's always a ground level like uh, comeuppance. Okay, where are we starting from? How are we truly perceiving things? And so that frequency that that Benny talks about every day, I love to just go in and ask people, how are you doing today? Mm -hmm. That is enough. Mm -hmm. How are you? Mm -hmm. Great to see you. Mm -hmm. Just a, an acknowledgement of another human being, mm -hmm. that in of itself de debunks and dissolves the conditioning that people have. And all of a sudden they're like, oh my goodness, someone actually cares about what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. that shift their con that's yeah. a consciousness shift, ladies and gentlemen. The right there, that's a healing. One of the things I started doing with my children is just my guys. I've got Trey's 22, uh, Kendrick is 17, Rias is 14, and Soraya's wow. 12. I say, have fun. When Trey leaves to go to school or I take the others to school, have fun, period. If I can get them into a fun state and that type of feeling and they're resonating that I know if that's what they're offering when they go into the school and as long as they hold it, that's what they're going to run into. And so I have protected them. Not only am I protecting them from my energy offering, I, I see them in a bubble and it's beautiful and the light is bright. But if I can get them expressing, 
have fun. Exciting to me and my me and my daughter go through a thing where we used to. I, when I remember, I do it now. She says she still does it. Fun, exciting, powerful, beautiful, excellent, brilliant. If she says when we say those words, the energy expands in the car, right? And then she gets out of the car and she walks into the school in that energy. And I know she's protected, right? Yeah. Because in that energy, she's offering that vibration. Now, now, you know, you make such a great point, Benny. Um, let's let's go back to you know the there's a dismantling of people's belief systems, like especially cyclic, like a cycle within the human history. You know, spirituality, atheism, religion, it kind of goes in these cycles. Right now, I feel like it's a spiritual expansion, but you know, poo hoo the religious aspect. I still we'll have a healthy conversation with people to realize that you need to start somewhere. And so when, when you, I always remind people, if you believe, if you dis, if you um, discount someone else's belief system, you dismiss your own. Yes. So it's a, it's sort of like a understanding that everyone has their own baseline to, you know, I, I you know, no matter how many people want to sort of like, they always laugh me out of the room when I say this, but I have, an absolute um, fan fanboy um, relationship with uh, Joel Osteen, mm -hmm. and people are like that guy's a charlatan. He's just a a hack. Listen, if you know anything about channeling, and I'll mention this to Benny, that dude gets up on that stage and he is channeling an energy. He and if it's God, it's God. If it's Jesus, Jesus. He is straight up channeling. All all bets are off. And if you know this, you'll have a different viewpoint of, of how he perceives things. Now, what his desires are, whether they're constructed in other things, that's not from my concern. I don't really get caught up in the semantics. What I do appreciate is that frequency that he brings in, his God, his Jesus. And it's, in my opinion, second to none when he's doing that. Mm -hmm.